Hello and welcome everybody to the video on encystment. The previous video was about endospore and how the bacteria forms the endospore. So if you want to check it out, check it out. There will be a link over here somewhere. Okay. So let's go get uh, into the process of encystment, which is also called exospore formation. Like endospore, this is exospore. Okay. So let us see how it forms. So we will first need a uh, bacterial cell for that so let us draw a bacterial cell quickly over here okay so here we have a basic structure of the bacterial cell with the cell wall the cell cytoplasm and the new genetic material okay so there will be another if you have studied bacterial cell structure there will be some invaginations called mesosomes and some granules so leave that the ribosomes will also be there leave all those this is the basic thing we it is necessary for the demonstration of the process of encystment. So the first step and the basic step is that the cytoplasm is actually going to condense, it is going to shrink or contract and the cell membrane is not going to shrink. Okay, The cell membrane is going to remain attached to the cell wall and the cytoplasm is going to shrink. So guess what? What are the empty voids? spaces occupied with so they are actually the vacuoles so when we, we will see the next uh, uh, image over there we will find a lot of vacuoles in the cell or the bacterial cell and another thing which will happen is that this cell wall is going to thicken so as we all know the cell wall is uh, formed of peptidoglycan so the thickening of the cell wall means some additional layers of peptidoglycan deposited over the previous ones and it is quite intuitive because the thickening of the cell wall means more protection as the cell wall is primarily for protection right so that will be the thickening of the cell wall contraction of the cytoplasm and another thing we may add is that the genetic material is going to condense and form like like we have the chromosome they will condense and form a tighter and mm, uh, condensed genetic material okay so let us see the next image and figure out what are the changes that happen okay so we can visualize all the changes which took which took place by this cartoon figures of the bacteria so the genetic material clearly condensed over here <coughs> these are the vacuoles which formed due to the condensation of the cytoplasm and obviously you can see the cell wall has thickened quite a bit so now in this thick cell wall there is actually the formation of two distinct layers which are called the exine and the intine so let me label it first this outer layer is called the exine or exine exine always means something outside right so this outer layer is called the exine <coughs> and the inner layer is called intine <coughs> over here so this layer is called the intine okay in time now these are the vacuoles let's let me level that also so this is the vacuole which has formed due to the condensation of the cytoplasm and the con condensed genetic material that doesn't need to be labeled okay so that is the structure <coughs> of a cyst so obvious question which might arise in your mind is that this exine and intine sound very much similar to that present in a pollen grain right so the pollen grain contains exines and intine if you have studied that chapter and can we actually equate those two can we compare those two present in the bacteria or and, and the pollen grain and well yes we can obviously do that because the pollen grain can be also compared to a cyst you may have studied that a pollen grain is actually viable for a limited period and that period is actually the dormant period of that cyst so the pollen grain can be compared to a cyst what are the examples of bacteria which form cyst, uh, cyst? Uh, pretty much all types of bacteria form cysts there are some exceptions of bacteria you can call which do, do not form this type of cyst actually this cyst actually protects it from harsh environmental conditions bacteria 
protects the bacteria from harsh environmental conditions apart from that of the ex endospores okay which are formed by a limited number of bacteria as we had discussed in the previous video and one such example of a bacteria can be the azotobacter okay so that's one such example of a bacteria forming seas and not only is the bacteria bacteria which form seeds ceased but you may be surprised to know that even protozoa and nematodes also form cysts protozoa such as the entamoeba histrolytica or the causative agent for dysentery actually form cyst so when the protozoa is actually going to the small intestine to cause dysentery it has to pass through the stomach right so when it is passing through the stomach it has to pass the acidic ph of the stomach due to, due to the hcl which is secreted there and the cyst formation of cyst protects it okay and in the motors also we find the formation of cysts and this is pretty much all about seeds seeds <coughs> in the next video we are going to discuss about the classification of bacteria means the classification of bacteria into the different phylum of bacteria and that will pretty much deal uh, help us understand about the examples and the features of some common types of bacteria okay so bye for now let's see you in the next video thank you